Okay, let's get started. Thank you all so much for joining us on this day. Um, I hope that you are all having a wonderful day and we're gonna talk about financial aid. So let's just, we're gonna dive right in and, and we're gonna move right along here. So welcome to Financial Aid. Um, my name is Jennifer Bonn. I'm the Associate Director of Graduate and Professional Programs. Uh, please mute your audio and use the Zoom Q&A box to type in your questions anytime throughout the presentation. We are so happy that you're all here. Go Lions! So today's hosts and co-hosts, like I said, my name is Jennifer Bond. I'm the Associate Director of Graduate and Professional Programs. And with me today is Kathy Berganza, Scholarship Manager. She's going to be answering all of your questions as you type them in. And I will also be answering uh, some questions at the end of the presentation. So just feel free to um, go ahead and type in any questions you have. And let me just make sure that I'm admitting everyone in that wants to come into the room. Okay, so let's uh, move on here. So today's topics, oops, my apologies. Today's topics, the definition of financial aid, applying for financial aid and eligibility, types of financial aid. We're gonna talk about the cost of attendance and then we'll go over some helpful tips. And then of course our contact information for those of you that wanna reach out to us and ask questions that you may um, not have answered, um, that we may not be able to answer during this presentation. So the definition of financial aid, financial aid is money to help students pay for college. Um, it can be in the form of grants, work study, loans, scholarships, um, all these help to make college affordable for students. And that's what financial aid is. Financial aid, again, can come from the federal a government, from the state, a school or private sources, employers. Um, let me make sure I'm admitting everyone, my apologies. Okay, um, applying for financial aid. So how do you apply for financial aid? The application process is actually really easy. It's really simple. All you have to do to apply for financial aid is complete the free application for federal student aid. Um, it's, a, it's an application that's really easy to complete and you would apply at www.studentaid.gov. Um, it's important that you create an FSA ID. It's a username and password combination that will um, help you to sign your FAFSA electronically. Um, and that FSA ID will be the same FSA ID that you will use every year to complete your FAFSA. Um, information for this year is based on the 2019, your 2019 income taxes. Um, and students must reapply every year for federal aid. So the FAFSA should be completed every academic year. Our school code for students that want the FAFSA, your FAFSA to come to LMU, you would use our school code 001234. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you complete and submit your department's scholarship application. And uh, for questions about the scholarships available through your college, you want to make sure that you check directly with your program coordinator or the person that you have contact with within the college, and they can provide you more information as far as what scholarships are offered directly through your college. The basic eligibility to be eligible for federal aid, um, one is to be a U.S. citizen or eligible non-citizen. You have to have a valid social security number with the exception of students from the Republic of Marshall Islands, Federated States of Micronesia, or the Republic of Paulo. You must be registered with Selective Service. If you're a male, you must register between the ages of 18 and 25. You must be enrolled in an eligible degree program or non-degree credential program. You must be enrolled at least half time. For graduate students, half for graduate degree seeking students, half time is three units or more. For students in a non-degree credential program, half time is considered six units or more. You also must maintain satisfactory academic progress to be eligible and to continue um, eligibility. Types of financial aid. Gift aid, grants or scholarships that do not need to be repaid. 
There are also loans, which is borrowed money that must be paid back, usually with interest. Um, work, money earned by the student as payment for a job on or off campus. And we call it either federal work study or LMU work. Types of grants and scholarships that are available to students. From the federal uh, for students can apply for a federal teach grant if you're um, in the teacher preparation programs. The teach grant program provides up to 4,000 a year to students who are completing or plan to complete coursework needed to begin a career in teaching. Students must sign a teach grant agreement to serve in which you agree to, among other things, teach in a high need field at an elementary school or secondary school that serves students from low income families. And you must work uh, for four complete academic years within eight years after completing your course of study or degree. One thing to note about the federal TEACH grant is that if you do not meet the requirements of your service obligation, all TEACH grant funds you received are converted to a direct unsubsidized loan. You must repay the loan in full with interest charged from the date of each TEACH grant disbursement. So this is a wonderful, the Federal TEACH Grant is a wonderful program for students that are going into the teaching field and feel that this is something that they want to do and that they meet these requirements, um, but only if you're absolutely sure, because again, it does convert into a direct unsubsidized loan as of the date of disbursement if you don't meet the obligation of the contract. Other types of aid, grants and scholarships through the state of California is the Cal Grant TCP, stands for Teaching Credential Program. Undergraduate Cal Grant A and B recipients um, who enroll in a Teaching Credential Program, TCP, after they receive their bachelor's degree may be eligible to receive or renew their Cal Grant award for one additional year. So if you received a Cal Grant as an undergraduate student within the last 18 months, you may be eligible for the Cal Grant TCP. And what you'll need to do is complete Form G44 and return it to the California Student Aid Commission or CSAC, as we call them. You must also complete the FAFSA or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. To learn more about this program, you can visit studentaid.gov teach. Another program that's actually a fairly new program is called the Golden State Teacher Grant Program. And this particular program is available to students um, who are interested in going into special education, into special education. Uh, for additional information, you can visit uh, www.csac.ca.gov um, and you can find out about this program and to see if this program is, is right for you. The application process is also available on the CSAC website. Types of aid, grants and scholarships available through the university. Institutional grants and scholarships are awarded directly by the college. So whatever college you are in, you would reach out directly to the college to see what scholarships may be available for you. The application, each college has their own application and the application is available on our website in the financial aid section. And this is the website you would go to right here financialaid.lmu.edu slash backslash graduate backslash types of available aid. Also, we also encourage students to apply for outside scholarships. Um, I did it as an undergrad and I always encourage students to apply for, for outside scholarships to see what's out there. I mean, there are lots of scholarships out there and some resources are um, listed on the screen schoolsoup.com and collegenet.com. And we always caution students when applying for outside scholarships, because if you ever come across a site that's asking you to pay money to apply for a scholarship, it's not legit. Don't ever, you should never have to apply um, or pay money to apply for a scholarship. So just be wary if a site is ever asking you to pay money to apply for a scholarship. Other types of aid are federal direct loans. One of the loans is the unsubsidized loan. This particular loan, you can borrow up to 20,500 if you're a degree seeking student. 
And if you're a non-degree credential student, you can apply and borrow up to 12,500. The unsubsidized loan does not require any type of credit check. And the interest rate uh, for this coming, for the current academic year is 4.0, 4.3. And the loan fee is uh, 1.059. Interest rates change every July 1st. So this will change for the 21-22 academic year. But it's usually not much. The change is usually not much. Uh, interest rate begin accruing on the date the loan is dispersed. And if you are awarded an unsubsidized loan and accept it, you must complete a master promissory note and the entrance counseling on studentaid.gov. Another type of loan available to graduate degree seeking students is the graduate plus loan. For this loan, you can borrow up to the cost of attendance minus any other aid you've, you, you've been awarded. Um, you must be credit eligible to be approved for a Graduate PLUS loan. And for the 2021 academic year, uh, the interest rate is 5.3% and the loan fee is 4.236%. Interest rates change every October 1st for the Grad PLUS loan. Um, so if you, will be attending the next academic year. It will definitely change. And for this particular loan, also you must complete the interest counseling and a master promissory note. So for each loan, they, each loan has its own entrance counseling and master promissory note. And both of these requirements can be completed on studentaid.gov. So the benefits, I always like to talk about what are the benefits of direct loans versus um, private loans. Uh, direct loans by the Department of Education or the federal government, the interest rate is fixed. It, they come with an, a fixed interest rate. They offer various repayment options, including income-driven payment plans. And you can learn more about the various repayment options on studentaid.gov backslash plans. They also offer deferment options that you don't necessarily get with private loans. And again, there is the website where you could uh, go to so that you could learn more about the deferment options that are available to you as a student. They also offer loan forgiveness on some of their loans. Uh, depending if you work in certain fields, you may be eligible to have some, some uh, portion of your loans forgiven. You can learn more about loan forgiveness programs on studentaid.gov backslash forgiveness. Other loan options, the private alternative loans. So we always put on here, this should be your last resort with an exclamation point because it really should be. We always encourage students to go the federal direct loan route for uh, the various benefits that I just discussed in, in the previous PowerPoint. Um, the alternative loans uh, sometimes require a credit check. They may, be, they may have a fixed uh, or variable interest rate. They may also require a co-signer on behalf of the student. Um, the loan is from a private lender not affiliated with the government or Department of Education. So this is not a federal loan. And again, they don't offer the same repayment or deferment options as federal loans do. Work study. Um, students can apply for work study. You can apply for work study as a graduate student. Um, and students can earn between two to 3,200 per academic year. Uh, students will need to find a job on campus. So you, even though we award you work study, it's still up to the student to find a job on campus. But um, we have a website, um, Student Employment Services can assist students with uh, finding jobs on campus. Students can work eight to 10 hours per week on average, and you earn a paycheck. So um, the paycheck that you receive, you could either use it for educational expenses or you can opt to have it applied toward your tuition and fees. And like I mentioned, you can visit Student Employment website uh, for additional information at studentaffairs.lmu.edu backslash activities backslash SES. The cost of attendance. So the estimated cost of attendance for attending LMU, um, this is just a general basic cost of attendance. It, I wanna go over the note that your cost of attendance may be higher depending on your program of study and your unit enrollment. But currently uh, tuition and fees are 
for a student enrolled in six units, 16,128. The room and board estimation is 19,896. Books and supplies are 1,080. Transportation is estimated at 858. Your personal and miscellaneous expenses are 3,784 for a total cost of attendance of 41,746. And again, just to make it clear, the cost of attendance really depends on your program of study and your unit enrollment. Some helpful tips. Things to remember. Submit your FAFSA early. The FAFSA for the 2020, for the 21-22 academic year will be available in October. So at the end of this month, it's available. Um, so students can always submit it early. Check your email frequently once you uh, apply with LMU. If there's anything missing as far as information that we may need from you, we will send you an email letting you know. Um, you want to make sure you register the email at finaid at LMU um, with your spam checker. Ask questions and research online. Do not wait to contact us. If you ever have any questions, we're here to help you. Um, and we're always available by um, email and, of course, by phone Monday through Friday. And how do you contact us? Our email is finaid at lmu.edu. And the phone number to reach us is 310-338-2753. And our fax number is listed there. You can follow us on Twitter. And our website is financialaid.lmu.edu. And you are always welcome to email our office or call us. Our phone lines are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so now we're going to go over some questions. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we look forward to seeing you in the fall. I want to see if we can answer. Um, let me see. Um, we have a question. Is there a maximum amount of times or year or years you can apply for a FAFSA? Um, that's a good question. Um, so there is no maximum as a graduate student, but there is a maximum amount of loans that you can borrow as a graduate student. Currently, the aggregate for graduate students is 138,500, so 138,500. Another question that we have is, whoops, let me go back up. It says, is the cost of attendance for one semester or one year? So the cost of attendance that I provided um, was for the academic year that we went over on our um, on one of the slides. And another question. Um, another question is, is it best to apply for financial aid scholarships before we get accepted for enrollment? Absolutely. You should always apply, begin applying actually a year in advance to outside scholarships to see um, what's available. Um, you should, usually they start accepting uh, scholarship applications a year in advance. So definitely you want to get out there and start submitting applications to um, scholarship foundations that are accepting. And then let me see if we can go over. No, it looks like all the other questions were answered. So thank you all um, so much for joining us. We really enjoyed having you and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day.